Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. We're gonna to be working on our John Deere 5065E. It's service time. We're about to trip 500 hours on this tractor, so we're gonna go ahead and change the oil, change the hydraulic filter, make sure we're full on hydraulic fluid, hit all the lubrication points, check the air filter, and basically do a general walk around in service. I'll take you around the tractor today and we'll show you a few things about it tell you why we chose this tractor even though we drove Mahindra, we drove Kubota, we drove this tractor, we drove case tractors, we drove all sorts of tractors to try and be an informed consumer when we bought this 5065E. So come along today, we'll have a little bit of fun on the farm and we'll show you how we change the oil in the tractor and do a little service. All right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to do guys is we're going to walk around this tractor. If you're here just to change the oil and do your service, then skip to this point right here. We'll have some scrolling letters that'll tell you what point to skip to and we can just show you how to change the hydraulic filter, change the oil filter and refill the oil. So we're going to take you around the tractor, talk about the tractor, tell you what I like about it, tell you what I don't like about it and just do a general little walk around on the 5065E tractor. So we've had this tractor somewhere in the neighborhood of three years now, two and a half, three years, something like that. Really, really like the tractor. Got a few little issues on it. This was the factory toolbox and we went on and we upgraded. We took Took an ammo can and we painted it John Deere green and we mounted it right here. There used to be a small toolbox right there and we upgraded that. This is John Deere's quick attach loader system and basically you pull this little notch back, you fold that down and this pin comes out and the whole loader system, this whole H240 loader system comes right off the tractor and you just pull the two pins on each side. So it's really, really nice to have if you want to remove the loader and just do some mowing or something like that. Now, as we said, this is a 5065E. It's a 65 horsepower. I believe it's 63 horsepower to the PTO. Really happy with this four wheel drive tractor. A few things, a few weak points right here where the hoses hang down. That's kind of a weak point right there. They like to grab a hold of stuff sometimes and you can see I've already started to wear a little bit on my little hose protector. Now you might notice this thing is covered with grease and oil and grime. Well, when it comes to unhooking and hooking up these hydraulic hookups when I'm taking the loader on and off, it just makes a mess. So you gotta kind of rinse that with the pressure washer gently at some point or put a little degreaser on it and rinse it off. Always remember when you're working with a tractor or anything mechanical, water is the absolute enemy. So make sure things dry really good before you start operating them. Now folks, I'll be completely honest, I'm a consumer. I'm no tractor mechanic, I'm a consumer. If you folks know a little bit more about this tractor or a little bit more about mechanic work, please feel free to leave comments down there. Please don't leave hateful, condescending, know-it-all tractor guy comments. Every time I post a tractor video, there's always five or 10 or even 15 know-it-all tractor guys that have a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge, but they seem to want to smear me instead of share their knowledge. So share your knowledge. Let's be smart together. All right. Now the hood latch on this, you just pull right here and up she goes. And right here is what we look like under the hood. So like I said, this tractor is being used, so it's a little bit dirty underneath there. And our battery compartment's nice and clean. And this is where our air filter goes. So we'll take that air filter out. And we'll show you how we do that and we'll blow it clean. It also looks as if we could do a little bit of cleaning right here. Got some yuck stuck into the radiator right there. Now, one of the things that I had an issue with on this John Deere tractor is there's a loose connection right here and we're gonna have to address this loose connection at some point. There's a little bit of oil kind of blowing out right there and we'll take care of that. Now this is our loader and this is a quick attach skid steer style loader. Now if I bought any tractor I would always want to have this style loader just because I don't want to have to go with John Deere specific equipment or buy an adapter. And here are our secondary remotes right here. And basically if you're using something with hydraulics on the front that's what you use. Now here's our operator station. This is our high, low, and medium and we have a transmission over here reverse first, second, and third. And this is our stick for our bucket right here. This is our gas control. We have lights right here. And at some point we're gonna put an auxiliary spot right here where we can charge our phone, which we have a phone mount right here. So I put this phone mount on myself. I'll post a link down there. Guys, this thing has really, really held up nicely. I have them in all my trucks and all my equipment. 
So nice phone mount. Now you may see something different on this seat. This right here is called the Miracle Bamboo Cushion. Guys, this is a back saving tool right here. Somehow, some way, this thing works. And when you're bouncing around on that tractor, it really saves your back. Now it comes with a really comfortable seat, but when you're sitting on there for eight hours or so, that little cushion makes a huge difference. And I'll post the link down below. Just FYI, any cool little nuances that you see in the video, let me know if you want to link to them. There will be links down in the video description to this pillow and the phone mount and most all the stuff that we're going to use. The oil filters, type of oil that we use, everything will be listed down there in the video description, okay? It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. We're all going to learn something today. Kind of cool. Let's shut the hood here. We'll pull her on in the garage. Yeah. Did I say garage? I meant shop. Here in the shop, we have our filters already set out. We have our oil already set out. And we also have a five gallon bucket of high guard hydraulic fluid that's made for this tractor. Now we're gonna pull it in the shop. We really don't have to have a shop to do this. You could do this out in your driveway. You could do it out in your lawn if you just like oil in your grass or whatever you wanna do. But we'll pull the tractor in here to the shop where it's nice and cool and we'll get busy working. was much more complicated than it needed to be. I had to drop the canopy in order to get it into the garage. If somebody would have been thinking when they built the shop, they might have put the door about a foot higher. So first thing we're going to do is raise the hood on the tractor here and we're going to change our oil and mess with all the oil stuff before we even think about touching that dusty air filter because we don't want dust in our oil. So we're going to be very careful not to get dust in our oil. The tractor ran for about eh, 10 minutes or so so the temperature probably is about 110 degrees you want it slightly warm so that the oil will drain a little bit better we have a 5 8 ratchet here and we have a clean rag a clean ish rag and we're going to go under here and we're going to wipe off the drain plug and we're going to take the drain plug out and let the oil drain now you want to make sure you've got a big enough receptacle to hold nine quarts of oil that's a lot of oil okay all right too much oil near my ear. So here's our drain plug and we'll just wipe it clean just to make sure we don't introduce any kind of cooties in there. As we're underneath the tractor here, we're inspecting everything underneath it. This is a fairly new tractor, so it shouldn't be a whole lot going on. We'll crack that oil filler. There we go. Should just be able to crack it and then get the rest by hand. Just unscrew it and say a prayer that we have the uh, pan in the correct place and it doesn't spew out everywhere. There we go. Good deal. Nice and warm, just perfect. While that's draining, we'll change the filter. Now the biggest challenge when making a video like this is to not get oil all over the camera. So that's why I have these girly gloves on right here. If you guys are interested in some nitrile gloves, these grip type nitrile gloves work great, okay? So if you've got an office job, your real job, you might want to check into a box of these. I'll post links down below. So now I have a second little drain pan that I use for smaller vehicles. And we'll go ahead and we'll set this drain pan up and we'll put it underneath where we take our oil filter off, okay? So just for fun, let's talk about these bins that I have. So I have one bin that's all car wash stuff and I have one bin that's all oil change stuff. And I try to make this my automotive area or my lubrication area. So we'll pull out the oil change bin and I have basically all the tools that I need to change the oil in the trucks tractors, gator, lawnmower, all that stuff. I keep it in one tote. I'll show you. Open her up. Everything I need is in here. When I get ready to change oil, and we're going to get this oil filter wrench and pop off that oil filter. That's the wrong way, dummy. This is the John Deere brand. I changed it with the John Deere brand, and that's probably what's recommended, but I think we're going to use a Fram filter for the, for the oil change. We'll wipe everything down really good here with a clean rag. Now we'll take our new filter and we'll take a little bit of oil and rub it right on that gasket right there, okay? Pretty simple. So we're doing a full synthetic oil change on this tractor and I write on my oil filter the type of oil we use, the change interval, so we're going to change it again at 750 hours, and the date, 4-11-18. So we'll either change it every year or every 250 hours. I think John Deere recommends in the book every 500 hours. We'll keep good track of it. If the interval is recommended any sooner, then I'll put myself a little sticky note on the dashboard of the tractor, okay? I leave little notes for myself all the time because you need little notes for yourself all the time. It's hard to keep all this stuff organized. We have three tractors, a skid loader, and five trucks, and a van, and mowers. It's just a lot, and a gator. 
it's a lot to keep up with. All right, a bunch of you guys are getting ready to roll your eyes because we're using a Fram oil filter, okay? Some people are really, really down on these Fram oil filters. Uh, I've had no issue with the Fram oil filter myself, so if you know of a better oil filter brand, leave a, a comment down there below, okay? We'll go ahead and get this guy on. We don't want it too awful tight, and then we'll give it one little turn with the wrench. Make sure it's snug. There we go. I know that flag is backwards. We're gonna fix that flag. I know it's backwards, guys, okay? But if you look at it through the window, it's the right way. We'll go ahead and put our drain plug back in, all right? And we're gonna wipe everything down, and I'm gonna hit my head on something or get it greasy. It's hard to do this with a camera in one hand and another hand. In the other hand, I got it. Now we're not gonna go gorilla on this. We're just gonna tighten it down a little bit, okay? Right about there. Now, if I was really, really OCD, I would go ahead and get a torque wrench and torque it to specs, but I feel pretty comfortable with what I have. We'll take our rag, we'll wipe everything off right here. So before we even start fooling with the hydraulic filter, we're gonna go ahead and refill the oil, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and reach in our oil change box here and get the appropriate funnel right there. If you don't already have an oil change box and you're not changing your own oil at the house, you're wasting money. Now, when I first got this tractor, I had no idea where to put the oil in, so I had to look it up in the book. So when I got done doing that, I took my label maker and I made myself a little label for this thing right here that says oil. And that way I know. Get our funnel down in our filler neck. And she takes nine quarts of Rotella T6. I don't have to use full synthetic oil, but I choose to use full synthetic oil because I just think it's better. Some of you old school folks might think it's gonna make the tractor leak oil. If you've experienced that at all, if you've experienced using synthetic oil and it causing an oil leak, tell me about it. Post a comment. Whoop. Oh, let's glug a little bit in the floor. So while we're here pouring oil, I'll tell you about the experiences that I had with the other tractors. So we're looking for a tractor in the 50 to 70 horsepower range. And the John Deere 5065 here pretty much fit the bill a little bit better than the other brand of tractors. We rode on the Mahindra, we rode on the uh, Kubota. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have gotten a cab model tractor. You know, they're all pretty similar. It's just a matter of what feels good to you. And the operator station on this just felt better and more user friendly to me than the other tractors. It, it just did. Now, whether this is a better tractor, I don't know. I think they're all built pretty well. I know Mahindra has the best warranty out there. Uh, John Deere doesn't have quite the warranty that the Mahindra tractor does, but we bought the extended warranty just because we wanted to make sure if we had an issue, it was taken care of. I write down pretty much all the information I need to know. Like, I didn't know I needed that size socket, so I'm going to write that down in my little tractor book, and next time I won't have to look and dig and get under the tractor twice. I'll already have all my tools ready. It's a good idea to keep a log book of all your equipment, even if you just have a lawnmower and a snowblower or push mower. It's a good idea to keep a log of your equipment. It's simple, cheap, and saves you trouble and time later on. Whoop. That was a good catch right there. That was a good catch. <laughs> and we'll reinstall our oil cap loosely. We'll start the machine, we'll let it run for just a minute, we'll shut it down, and we'll recheck the oil. Do not ever, ever start a tractor without your butt planted in that seat. It will save your life. We'll shut it down and we'll check our oil. Now, one thing I don't like about this tractor is where the dipstick is located. It's right here. So I've got to go down in between all this mess. And this is something I check every time I use my tractor. So it's quite a pain in the butt. But we're looking good here. We'll wipe it off. Now, see, I can't even see where to put my dipstick back. There we go. Put it back, pull it back out. It says to add just a little bit. So we'll go ahead and add another half a quart and we should be good. All right, one more time. Let's check it again. There we go. Right on the mark, right on the money. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change out our hydraulic filter. Here's what the new filter looks like here. And this is the John Deere brand hydraulic filter. I will go ahead and we'll screw off the factory filter. It's still green. It was painted green when the tractor was painted and we'll replace it with this one. Now we probably should have replaced this filter at about 200 hours but we're okay. All right, so I'm gonna try to get in here where you can see. We're just gonna take our channel locks here and we're gonna hook onto our filter and unscrew it. And this is on the low pressure side, so there should be no pressure whatsoever. 
There we go, pop her loose. And now we should be able to get it with our hand. There we go, yep. Filter's draining itself out right here into our oil pan. And right around here is a little rubber seal. I wanna pull that rubber seal. And there it is. And your new John Deere filter will have a rubber seal with it, okay? And I guess this pretty much applies to most any farm tractor, okay? So if you guys are looking at this as a guide for most any farm tractor, this is it. We'll go ahead and we'll put a little hydraulic fluid around the outside edge of our rubber seal, replace the gasket, and screw the new one on. We just basically slip that down into our filter. We're gonna wipe our hands clean and we're gonna hand tighten this. And that's pretty much it. Be sure you don't cross thread it. Make sure there's no trash getting wound up in it. I'm gonna hold these hydraulic lines back as I screw it on there. Now, I'll make a note in my log book and I'll also make a label. And I'll put a label up there on the instrument panel that tells me when I change the uh, hydraulic filter, when I change the oil, and when I change the fuel filter. And we're gonna do the fuel filter next. Now you just need to make sure that your hydraulic filter is on hand tight, okay? So get it on nice and hand tight. If you tighten it too tight, you could cause that rubber gasket to roll over on itself and cause more problems than it could leak. We've got it on hand tight, and now we'll go ahead to our fuel filter, and a fuel filter is pretty simple. There's just a little ring around the outside. We turn that ring a quarter turn, drop the ring off, and then we'll slide our new fuel filter up in there. This is a new John Deere fuel filter. We'll hang on to all of our boxes and we'll write all our part numbers down so that we have everything we need when it comes to service this tractor again. This tractor is the tractor we will have probably for the rest of our lives. This tool I'm getting ready to use is a filter wrench. You want to be very, very careful with this and be gentle. Turn it a quarter turn. If you can turn it with your hand, turn it with your hand. If not, just use this guy. Be very, very gentle because this is made of plastic and it can break very easily. Just ever so slightly, there we go. Being very gentle here, okay? Precision hands like a surgeon, okay? Now, your fuel filter should just slip out, just like that. Now we'll take our new fuel filter and we'll slip this little ring over top of it and we'll slide it on and then there's a little pump on the top of the fuel filter canister area that you fill this thing back up with and you just pump on it until you feel resistance and it'll be full. Pretty cool. Slide this guy in place and there's some index little notches in there. You want to find the spot where those notches fit and slide it right on up in there. There's our sweet spot. Push it up in there and turn this guy back on. There we have it. Now we'll take our little pump and we'll fill our fuel filter with fuel. Probably take 10 or 12 little pumps. Starting to feel resistance now. And then we'll mash the clutch in and we'll fire it up. So far so good, everything seems good. We're gonna check our hydraulic fluid levels. We'll fill it up and we'll pull the air filters out and blow those out if they need it. I'll show you how that works. Okay, so we're at the back of the tractor and we're gonna check our hydraulic fluid. And I've had it running for a little bit up to optimum temperature it tells me to add so i'm probably going to add somewhere in the neighborhood of half a gallon or so in here this hydraulic setup really holds a lot of hydraulic fluid i think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 quarts of hydraulic fluid so we've got a five gallon bucket of high guard hydraulic fluid that's recommended by john deere and that's what we'll put in here okay that did the trick now for all you purists that think you should only check the hydraulic fluid when the tractor is running. I checked it while it was running and I checked it warm and I also checked it while it was turned off and it still was at the same mark. Now here we are at the last thing I wanted to show you. We're going to pull the air filters out and it's pretty simple. They're a two-stage air filter. They're oilless air filter and like I said it's pretty simple. Pop these two clips and this pretty much applies to any tractor. Take your air filter and we twist it a little bit and slide it out. We have an inner and an outer. Basically, you just wanna make sure that they're both clean. You take this air filter and you can blow it out. You can use it probably two or three times, four or five times, I don't know, several years. And then you'll have to replace the air filter. It's pretty simple, not much to it. Let's see how much dust is in it real quick. It's not too bad. So we'll take our air hose and we'll go in here and we'll gently blow first and then we'll gently blow the outside and we'll stick it back in there. Pretty simple. Uh, the reverse installation, I mean, it pretty much tells you right here, you twist it to lock it. So we'll slide this back in turn it and lock it. It's really not that dirty. 
So I don't even think I'm gonna blow it out. I think we're in good shape. Now we will go underneath the tractor and we'll lubricate all of our little zert fittings, all of our little grease fittings. We'll lubricate those. We'll squeeze about two squeezes of grease into each fitting. There's one in particular that I wanted to mention that people don't see and it's on the front suspension where it articulates. So if you have a tractor, be sure you take a look at where that front suspension articulates, where the front axle moves. There is a joint right there that sometimes requires a little bit of grease. Guys, that's it for today. That's it for the vlog today. I appreciate you. I hope you learned a little bit of something about this tractor and I hope you learned a little something about changing the oil and servicing your tractor. So if there's anything I can do, leave a comment down there below. If you have any constructive criticism or if you have any good advice, please post it down below and we'll see you on the next vlog. I appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Guys, if you want a Stony Ridge Farmer shirt, they're available. There'll be links down below and there'll be links down below to all the tools and everything that we used in this video today. Okay? Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. All right? Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Pull that little tube.